Okay, um, my name is Lana Sanchez, and I'm here to interview Charles Hewitt. Okay, and today is um, May 15th, 2003. Um, okay, like, the first thing I'm going to ask is uh, if you can spell your name for me. First name or last yeah, name? Then. All of it. First name, last name. Charles, C-H-A-R-L-E-S, Hewitt, H-E-W-I-T-T. Okay, um... Okay, um, where were you born? In uh, Converse, Indiana, mm -hmm. in November the 20th, 1925. Mm -hmm. Um, and then what's your current address? 605 South 10th Street, Gas City, mm -hmm. Indiana. Um, then, like, we're here to talk about your war experience, and, um, what war were you in? Was it World War Two? World War Two, yes. Mm -hmm. um, what made you want to join? Were you drafted? I was drafted. I got, a, I got a letter from the draft board stating that my friends and neighbors had selected me to join the armed forces. <laughs> no, but that made you feel like, what were your feelings on that? I'd be scared. <laughs> I would. So that was in February, or uh, I became 18 in November of 1944, and I drafted in February 45. Mm. You're young. Yeah, I was 18. Mm. Um, how long had the war been going on? The war started in December the 7th of 1941 with the Japanese, and I don't recall when they went with the Germans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like, what were your views on the war? Did you, were you for the war, or were you, didn't really believe in the war? Well, I was for it because we had to stop the Japanese and the, the Germans because uh, Hitler was out to conquer the world, and uh, we didn't need him. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Um, like, what did you do in the army? Like, what was your position? I was a 60 millimeter mortar gunner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, where were you positioned? Were you like, did you go to Japan or anything? Uh, I took my took my basic training in Fort McClellan, Alabama, mm -hmm. and uh, I came home on 11 day furlough. We went back to Camp Van Dorn, Mississippi, and we were shipped out to uh, New York. And we left New York and we landed in, in France. Okay. Um, could you, do you know how to spell, like, the city? Or can you give me, like, about where they would be so I can know how to spell? It's not really hard. I have a book here that, that tells uh, all the places where where we were. Mm. Uh, this is our division. Shows it's a complete history of where the kids had it when when they were little. They draw pictures. And <laughs> oh. But uh, it shows tells all about where we were at and uh, what battles we were in the whole bit. And uh, of course some of the cities were Sargamines in France. Uh, we were in Nuremberg in Germany. That is really neat. Where did you get this? They, they gave that book to us when we were still overseas. Our, our uh, division. I was in the 63rd Infantry Division. Yeah. Hey, oh, it's so neat. Oh, cool. That's nice that they gave it to you. It's like little kind of little memory book. I do like the the officers and stuff that you talk to. Yeah, I was yeah. a major general. Uh, that's he, different ones put different pieces in. Uh, general Hibbs was the general of the division. That's neat. 
I have to come back sometime and read it. Why is that I love Lucy here? Yeah, <laughs> kids, kids copy that off of paper or something. Mm -hmm. and, That's neat. Uh, you're welcome to take that to school if you want okay. it, as long as you bring it back. Oh, um, on the interview, we're like, I'm going to do a presentation. Um, when they tell us the date, it's either going to be the 28th or the 30th. If you want, um, you can come and uh -huh. watch me do the interview. Uh -huh. I'll tell you about it later. That's really neat. Yeah, I'm seeing lay over there though, so it's not on my lap getting all crinkled. Um, okay. Did you uh, go on any kind of missions? Anything? You did you see battle? Yes. Mm -hmm. We were on the front lines. Uh, 125 days. Uh, by front line, I mean we were pushing into Germany every day. Some days we couldn't go anywhere because they too much resistance, mm -hmm. and we were in contact with the enemy for on the front lines for 125 days in a row without getting off the line. Was that in France where they had the, the trenches? We had foxholes. Uh, in uh, France, we lived in the Maginot Line, which was pillboxes, which were made out of cement. They were mostly underground, just had peepholes. You had to burn a candle all, all the time down there because there was no lights. And, uh, and a lot of times we we would stay in houses. If we we'd take a town like we would, uh, they'd let us stay in the houses. People would have to move out. Oh, troops. What'd you eat? What did we eat? Anything we could get a hold of. <laughs> we, we, they had our rations, which was mostly what they call sea rations. It was, uh, uh, well, sometimes you get a chocolate bar. It'd be, instead of being chocolate, it looked like chocolate would be white because it's been laying around so long. Oh. And it was just, it was filling. Uh, make you drink water and think you've had a good meal. Uh, sea rations were a lot of hash and stuff like that. It wasn't real good. Mm, yeah. Yeah, now they got some little MREs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, like, what were like the memories that stick out most, like you're over there? Oh, I don't know, just it, war is something that nobody should have to experience. Uh, American people really don't know what war is. <clears throat> Even 9-11 is just a small portion of war uh, when you have to live it. Four hours a day, seven days a week. Bombs are dropping, shells are flying over your head, and planes strafing. Uh, it's just nothing to, that should be pushed on to anybody. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of innocent people that, that get hurt. But uh, if they had their way, they'd be no worse. Conduct medal, uh, European Theater medal, the uh, uh, infantry uh, combat infamy, infantry badge, which was a uh, and I got the bronze star medal. Uh, What's that mean? Well, it was given to me for. Meritorious service. Uh, the cit cit citation I got for it. Okay. Oh, you had numbers? You signed a number and stuff? That was my dog tag number. I mean, my identification number.
Oh, you volunteer to lay communication wire mm -hmm. from 1,000 yards? Yeah. Oh, wow. How long did that take to lay that down? A long time, because we had to crawl. Holy. Crawl on our stomachs and kind of the, the, the Germans that were in the Siegfried line, and they had those pillboxes, uh, cement dug down, and just little peepholes where they could put their guns out and shoot at you. And uh, of course they had the artillery was zeroed in on the road where we had to go down. Uh, and they were shelling the road. And uh, you had to more or less crawl on your stomach to get, keep get hit. And uh, we, we put the wire down once shell hit it and we had to turn around and go back and put it down again. That was to have communications from the riflemen back to our weapons platoon so we could, could fire mm -hmm. our mortar guns. Did you do it at night? Is that when you yeah, started out? at night. You can't see anything, could you? No, you just do the best you can. Yeah. What is that in here? I've seen it on your thing, the dagger, the fire. Over really? here? Yeah. Division, 63rd Infantry Division. It was, uh, we were called the Blood and Fire Division. Oh, <coughs> so you had your own little symbol. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had a patch on our uniforms with that insignia on That's really neat. I got a new thing. Oh, that's you. Yeah. There's the, and I had the protégé, uh, that was the this thing here that the French give us for liberation in Cologne, <coughs> France. And this is the combat instruments. I think I got that in here. Let me go. When did you take this? Is this before? Before you went into the, is it after? No, I was mm -hmm. I was taken over in uh, Germany. Uh, that's a combat infantry one's badge. This is the Bronze Star Medal I got. What's the rifle name? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Long rifle. Oh. That is really neat. And uh, I got the the Bronze Star Medal come came to me after I got home from Boy. after I was discharged. I didn't know I was getting it until that is after really I got neat home. Surprise. That's really neat. But that was in the morning moment. Did you do anything else like that? No. <laughs> did a lot of things. Some you don't want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so now we're going to try to talk about. What's that? Is that this is another piece of. It's on the paper. Neat. Who did this for you? It's like really hard to talk about. Oh, you guys were the first to just completely see the Sigfrid line. Is that how you say it? Sigfrid? That's neat. Yes, there's a, just a letter I wrote home in June of 17th of 1945. I wrote home. Yeah. Did you write a lot? Pardon? Did you write a lot? Oh, you didn't have them. Time to write a lot. Whenever you had a little time, while you could write. Did they give you um paper and stuff to write, or yeah? Uh -huh. Did you keep a journal or anything? No, mm -hmm. just that little book there told the tells the story. A story for you. Uh -huh. Um, was there any time where you guys like didn't have no supplies or anything? 
They kept they took good care of you. Gave you your food. Did what? So they kept good care of you, gave you your food. Oh, the army? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say they could be, took good care of us because uh, a lot of times, like, like I said, you, you had those K rations and C rations which weren't, really weren't fit to eat. Mm -hmm. And uh, you stay in the foxholes day in, day out. They fill up with water and have to dip mm -hmm. water out of them. And uh, it got, it'd be cold over there, snow on the ground, freezing. It just wasn't an ideal place to be. Is that where you slept there too, obviously? Yeah, yeah, you had to stay in the foxholes. Mm -hmm. We put, we would put uh, a tree branch over them at night. And I was always bad about walking in my sleep. Oh, God. And I was afraid, to, always afraid that I'd get up in the night, be walking, and some of them was on guard would shoot me. And uh, one night, why that happened, they, we put a big tree on the, over the hole, two of us, took two of us, put it on there. And when I woke up, why one of our troops was hauling halt. He goes there. And it woke me up. And I'd give him the password then. And for quite some time, I was almost afraid to go to sleep. Yeah, I would too. Okay. I was bad about walking in the sleep back then. I did it at home. I'd get up when I was there from <coughs> home. Where I'd get up in the night. I might find myself outdoors somewhere. Oh my God. <coughs> that is real though. I used to wake up on the couch all the time. Mm -hmm. I'd always have a blanket then my dad would wake up and we'd go to work and just at first for a while they were like, Why are you sleeping on the couch? Like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't sleep in my room. Yeah. I only had a couple of times for a couple of months and mm -hmm. I got over it. Um so what do you guys do past the time? Well <coughs> when we were in houses I we had time, we'd play some cards. Uh, of course, when he was out on the front line, why, he didn't have, the only thing he'd do is, is uh, make sure nobody got up on you and snuck up on you, you know. And you had full guard duty ever so often. And uh, usually when he was out in the, out in the field on the, in the foxholes and things, uh, you just we usually had one guy in there with you, and uh, wasn't much to do. Just wait. Just there. Well, what was guarding like? Going out and guard. Guard duty. Yeah, it wasn't too good. It was lonely. You'd be out on the post for yourself. Uh, sometimes it'd be too obvious. Uh, I had a buddy, and he and I were on guard duty one night real cold out and we're supposed to stand four hours and uh, then they're supposed to relieve us. Four hours came and gone, nobody came. Six hours came, nobody came. So I told him, I said, you stay here. We were in a small town. There wasn't nobody, nobody there but us. And the uh, Germans were outside of the town. Civilians had all left. And uh, I told him, I said, you stay here and I'll go get the relief. And he said, no, I'm not going to stay. And I said, well, I'll stay and you go get the relief. And he said, no, he said, I'm not going to stay. <laughs> I said, well, if I'm going to go, if you want to go, you can go with me. <coughs> so we both took off and went up. The sergeant that was supposed to relieve us, he was asleep, which he wasn't supposed to be. And we woke him up. Of course, right away, he wanted to know what we was doing off of a post. He told him, and he said he's going to court martial both of us. And uh, of course, I told him, I said, well, you go ahead and, and uh, we'll see that you get court martialed also because you weren't supposed to be asleep either. He, he was the sergeant in charge of the guards. So he decided he didn't want court martials. And 
that night when I took my boots off, insulated boots, and my socks were froze to the boots. Wow. So guard duty wasn't, yeah, that is wasn't too great. Sounds like it's something you want to do. No. What does court martial mean? Uh, that means they be like uh, going uh, before a body and they found you guilty by they could put you in jail or during wartime they could shoot you. Are you serious? Yeah. Yes, kind of like treason? I don't think they ever, I don't think the United States done too much of that. But, yeah. but they would put you in, in uh, jail for walking off your post. post. But uh, like I say, he wasn't supposed to yeah. be asleep either. He's neglecting his job too. Yeah. You guys are just trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you guys like? Did you guys ever like play jokes on each other or anything? Or no. Mm -hmm. Wasn't much joking over there. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty. Solid. Pretty serious. <clears throat> you know, you get so tired, and uh, you wanna, you might be moving during the night, walking all night long, advancing. And uh, and the next day you'd be so tired you could hardly move, and you still have to get up and go. Cause uh, you get, when you got the enemy on the run, you had to keep pushing. You can't let up on them. Couldn't let up on him, but you got his feet solid on the ground again. Well, there's gonna be more trouble. Did you ever get sick or anything? Pardon? Did you ever get sick? No. That's good. Not the only thing I ever had over there, trouble over there was a toothache. I used to have a toothache off the bat. And uh, of course there was no, no way you could, nothing you could do for it. Mm. No place to go to get a dentist. Mm. The army had dentists, but they, they didn't have more stuff on the front line with you. Mm -hmm. They would have a barber up there. Usually somebody could cut your hair, but that was about it. And after the, uh, war was over. Why we we uh, guarded a third division. Uh, what the school they called it for guys that wanted to go and take up different schooling. It was a German garrison uh, where the Germans had had a school, and uh, I used to sit down there on the guard at duty at night, hold my head over a old wood stove get it hot without having a toothache too bad. Mm -hmm. And you get that took care of when you got back? They, they eventually I got to the dentist. They pull it, you know, when I got back, I, I had them taken care of them. I, I used to have a lot, a lot of bad uh, toothaches. And they didn't have any kind of aspirin or anything? No. Mm -hmm. yeah. They never did any good. Mm -hmm. They were just Hollow and nothing done that good. So, did you get along with most of the people? Oh, uh, yeah. And I say, right in that time, there's no room for arguing with no. people. Most of the guys got along together. Some of them, some of them didn't. So they get awful nasty with each other, but I didn't have no problem with them. Okay. You must say, you know, yeah, I. Yeah, I, you'd think that people would be just, they'd be so mad they might fight, but I don't think they would because you'd be too worried. That's, you guys need to be united. You know, you can't be fighting among each other. We had some guys, some of them would fight with each other, especially guys from Texas uh, and guys from, from uh, uh, New Jersey. They didn't get along. Even one of the ones from New Jersey was the sister gunner on a machine gun. The guy from Texas was a gunner. They couldn't get along. Uh, the guy from Texas, he wanted to carry the machine gun. The guy from New Jersey, he, wanted, he, he had to carry the base of it. And uh, the guy from Texas wanted to carry the whole gun. They just battled all the time. And the guy from Texas told him, if you ever get out in front of me, I'm going to shoot you. And, <laughs> I don't know whether he did it or not, but the guy got shot in the heel, 
And uh, we already did say that the guy from Texas has done it. <laughs> well, he said he would. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Well, do you think you'd ever go back and visit? or? Well, I'd like to go back to Germany sometime and visit, but I probably never will now. Mm. Uh, I am... I wouldn't give anything for the experience I got, but I wouldn't want to do it again. Mm. Yeah. What do you think like some valuable things you learned from yeah. going through that? Yeah, you learned a lot of things. Discipline. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. I've always said that the services are good for young guys if there's no war going on. Because they get a lot of discipline. Uh, they make they, they turn you around. <laughs> I learned a lot about yourself too. Because I bet before you never thought you could get up and do so many things like mm -hmm. all the traveling you did. Mm -hmm. So what was the country like? Like what you saw of it? Was like the countryside and stuff? Was it like? Like, kind of like America, or was everything way different? Well, I don't know what you mean there. Like the, the land, like was it? Oh, like it, it was uh, Germany with a lot of hills. Uh, and, of course, they had a lot of pine trees. Uh, you would take pine needles and uh, make us a bed, lay on layer blanket down over the pine needles pile them up and make a mattress for like for us. And they had rivers, a lot of rivers there. But we we walked across most of Germany. Hundred and twenty five days on the line and, and uh, we walked uh, just about all of it. How long do you think that was? How far do you think that was? I, I don't have any idea. Mm -hmm. Long way, 125 days, you probably go. Yeah, well, some days, you, some days we didn't go anywhere. We just, we just sat because the Germans were either down in the valley below us or they was reorganizing uh, down there. And, uh, uh, we just had to stay, stay in one place where the, the resistance was too strong and wait for the Air Force to come and bomb, strafe them or something. And we just more or less sat still in. Um, okay, like, I think some more questions. I lined went blank on the questions. I had lots of them. Hmm. I think I mean, I wrote these down, but I thought of some more. Did you like, did you have like a best friend or anything? Was there like anybody that you like had to stay with a lot? Or were you bounced around to different partners? No. We stayed pretty well together uh, during the war. After the war was over, like, you had to have uh, 85 points to come home, and they, by points, they, they give you so many points for different times in battle, uh, your service time, and uh, two or three other items, and if you didn't have 85 points, they would send you to another division, and I ended up in the one time I was sent to the 100th Division, and uh, I didn't have enough points to go home with them when they went home, so they sent me to the 3rd Division, and I stayed with the 3rd Division, and uh, finally got enough points that they shipped me to another division. I don't remember the number of them. And I got, got to come home, and, and they wanted me to re-enlist. Part of that. How long were you there then? How long were you enlisted? Uh, How long were you enlisted? Uh, I went in in 
February of uh, 11 days, and that's when they sent me overseas. So I finally got them all rounded up. Yeah. While I was overseas, why, we, they sent me back to Switzerland for a rest, and they brought, they had a whole troop, a whole train load of troops, a passenger train. And there's two people on the train that got to call home from Switzerland. And I was one of them. Mm -hmm. See, what did you say? How long did you get to talk on the phone? Well, I, it, it took me eight hours to get through. Uh, I called, and of course I was char uh, reversing the charges so they would pay the form on this end. Mm -hmm. And I put it in my dad's name, and the operator finally called me back and said, you, she said, your father is not home, would you like to talk to your mother? That's the way she talked. Mm -hmm. She was German. And uh, I said, well, if you hadn't talked to your mother for 18 months, would you like to talk to your mother? She said, yeah. And uh, so then it took me another four hours to when we get back through. Mm -hmm. At that time, oh, they, they got Betty and had her there, and I got to talk to all of them. Why did you get a call? Why, was it, why were you picked to call? Uh -huh. Why were you picked to call? Did, how'd they pick? Why did only two people get to call? So they drew names. Oh, they drew names? They, everybody put their names in and wanted to call, and they drew, just drew two out of the whole train. Uh, lucky, I guess. How many people do you think were on the train? Oh, shoot, I don't know. They probably had... Uh, Couple hundred or so. That's neat. That's kind of mm -hmm. mean. Just pick two yeah. names, get your hopes up, and then, wow, oh, but you're so glad. That'd be hard. So mm -hmm. you didn't talk to her for 18 months. Wow. A long time. Um, so when you got home, did you guys have a party or anything? Or? No, not really. Just all of them, all of them. My two brothers, they were, well, my one brother was home. He was, he'd was he been in Germany. My other brother, he, uh, I don't think he was home yet. He went to, to uh, Japan. He was over in there. But my brother was in Germany. He came and saw me while I was in Germany. He was, uh, he was with the combat engineers, and he was a master sergeant. And uh, he got him a, a jeep one day and hunted me up. I wrote him a letter and told him where I was at. And uh, he, he found, his, found me and came over and saw me that one day. He was there for a couple of days with me. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's your letter. How many people are in your family? 
Pardon? How many are in your family? I have two brothers and a sister. And the, the brother came to see me. He passed away several years back. Mm -hmm. My other brother lives in Marion. My sister lives in Jonesburg. What were the ages? Were you like the youngest in the child? Uh, what were the ages? Like, were you the oldest or the youngest? Or anything? I was the youngest. The you youngest baby. of the boys. My sister's the youngest. I was the youngest of the mm -hmm. boys. Mm -hmm. Did it, so they got drafted before you? Or? Yeah. Mm. What did you think when they got drafted? Well, I knew that, that uh, I would get drafted sooner or later. Uh, they they weren't they were they weren't going that much before me. Uh, the oldest brother might have been he might have been in there six months before me, and the other one probably three months or so. When you got back, like, what'd you do when you got back home? Yeah. Well, I went to work out at uh, Crosley Motors, out where General Tar used to be. They built that little Crosley car out there. And uh, I got a job out there. I worked out there for about five, six years before they closed it. When they closed it. Then uh, I couldn't find any jobs, so I went down to Suter's Dairy and went to work down there. I worked there till General Motors opened up and I went out there. Mm -hmm. and when did you get married? When was it? it was like got married in July the, got married July the fourteenth, nineteen forty four. Like in Pennsylvania. Yeah, it's fifty nine years this coming July. Uh, oh that's neat. You almost got sixty. That's a long time. Yeah. How many kids you got? We had uh, a girl and a boy, and the boy passed away about five years ago, six. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. <coughs> How's your daughter doing? Oh, pardon? How's your daughter doing? Uh, She's a registered nurse at the hospital. Mm -hmm. Have you any grandkids? Yeah. <laughs> Got uh, two grandsons. Or one grandson that's, uh, uh, he's about probably 26 years old. Granddaughter, it's somewhere around 23 or so. And my uh, daughter, she adopted a couple boys. One of them's Soon be 18, the other one's 13. 18, 19 there. Mm -hmm. And I got two great grandkids. Uh, boy, grandson's got two little girls. One of them's in, one of them I think should be in the second grade, and the other's probably in the fifth or sixth or something like that. Oh, okay. Makes good to be grandpa. Pardon? But it's great to be grandpa. Yeah. You get spoil them and send them home. Yeah. I do. Um, do you still keep contact with anybody? No. Uh, I had one guy who used to come around once in a while, but I haven't heard nothing from him for years. Uh, used to be a good one of them was in our uh, division that lived in Kokomo, but. I haven't even checked on him recently. I keep busy, too busy all the time. Don't have time to do that. Yeah, in there. Okay. Really busy. I yeah. like it. I say I don't, but then when summer hits and there's nothing to do, I get really bored. I'm like, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm trying to get a job right now. It's hard. It's hard to get a job, Marion, right trying now. Trying to get you a job. Yeah. Right? Trying everywhere. What, you in the... You're a junior? Yeah. Be a senior next year? Yeah. And you know, uh, I think I've never had a job before because I've never had a car to drive around. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any references. And, you know, I'm still in Where do you go to school? Marion High School. Marion High? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I'm trying to teach these right now. They're high end. Mm -hmm. um, 
So you started GM. That's where you. That was your career then. When mm -hmm. GM came in. Yeah, I stayed out there for uh, thirty and two tenths years. Oh. And I retired. What did you do there? Like what? What, what do job? I do now? So what out there? Yeah. I was a. Uh, my classification was an inspector, but I was a union official for twenty-two years. Unions, yeah. Yeah, I was a committeeman. I was an alternate committeeman, committeeman, a zone committeeman, and chairman of the shop committee. So I worked all the way up the ladder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your dad's involved in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you do now? Um, you keep you busy. I'm chairman of the retirees, uh, which we have a meeting every month. We have about 225 or 30 retirees who come down to Union Hall for dinner. And I'm president of the, of the Karen Chair program. Uh, I just keep busy all the time. And I'm uh, vice chairman of, uh, of the uh, Area 5 retirees. And I'm uh, vice president of the the National Council of Senior Citizens. So, a I'm lot. busy. Yeah. I'm busy all the time. A lot of me. Um, if there's like one lesson that you think that the service taught you, what do you think that would be? Like any like advice that you would give from? Well, I think the service probably made me a better person. Uh, they there's strict on discipline. Uh, probably if I hadn't went to service, I'd have been a little wild, probably. <laughs> and uh, they take that out of you real quick. So uh, I guess that, uh, like I say, I wouldn't take anything for the experience that I got, but I wouldn't want to do it again. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's just not. War is not for anybody. It's not like the movies. Mm. Do you guys ever have a room, like a reunion, like your regiment? Or no, I keep. Uh, I belong to the American Legion. I keep getting paper uh, from it, and it has in there different places where they're having reunions and everything. But I never saw anything on our division, so I don't know whether everybody's. Most of the people are gone, or what's happened, but uh, no, I never have had a reunion. Mm. There's getting to be less World War II veterans every, every day. Mm. Uh, they had a, they told one time how many passed away about every day, but I don't remember what it was, but it was a lot of them. Yeah, there's less and less veterans, but still a in a way, it's kind of good. That means there hasn't been a war for a while. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did any of your friends get drafted? Were like, were any of your like hometown people in your regiment or anything? No. Yeah. No, I don't remember ever seeing anybody for marrying. How do you think? The, how would you explain the training? Like, how long were you in there? Like, while did you get the training? Yeah. They had uh, 26 weeks of basic training. And uh, uh, they put you through the mill there in basic training. It's, they might get you up at midnight, take you out for a walk, and uh, make you run with your gun over your head and, and uh, crawl with it. And of course, it was all for your own good, really. And, uh, <coughs> and then we had uh, a joint one of them, after basic, they sent us and they formed the 63rd Infantry Division. And we done a lot of training there, which was combat training, making sure when we got over there we know what we was doing. Did you have to shoot and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like boot camp, kind of only up a notch, kind of something like that. You what? So it's kind of like boot camp or something only up a notch. Was it? Well, uh, boot camp was, it was tough, yeah. but the uh, one that uh, 
uh, Camp Van Dorn, Mississippi, after boot camp, it was it was rough too. Uh, we ate out of our mess kits all the time, which was just a little little aluminum pan, and uh, most of the time we had to eat outside of the. Only on Sunday could we eat in the mess hall, and the rest of the time we had to because everything you did down there was under combat conditions. Uh, they wanted you to get used to eating out of that mess kit, mess kit and wanted you to get used to eating K bars and uh, or D bars rather and uh, K rations. It was all done for a purpose. And, uh, you did at the time you didn't know why, why they were doing it, but you just soon found out. What did they do about religion? Were you religious at the time? You what? Were you religious or anything at the time? Religious? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, we went to, we'd go to church when they'd have it, but after you got overseas, like, very seldom was everybody in a group. Mm -hmm. We'd be out, maybe out on a hill in, in the foxholes, and they just there's two of you, maybe another foxhole will be as far from here across the street from you. And, uh, and you had your your uh, communications with your little telephone. It was, you'd be out front. A lot of times you'd be out there and be calling back to the rifleman or calling up to the rifleman telling them that we could see the Germans down in the valley doing something keep everybody posted, you know. So it was mostly you guys attacking the Germans? Or, or were you guys ever like surprised attacked or anything? No, we didn't talk to them. Uh, we could, sometimes we could hear them down away from us and we would uh, drop our, our mortar shells down on them or something. But uh, very seldom we talked to them. What did you think when the war was over? Well, I was glad because we were at the bottom of the Bulgarian Alps and we were dreading to go up, the, up those Alps. And uh, we got to the bottom of the Alps there 11 days. We were there 11 days and the war ended. So then they told us that we were going to go back, come back over here for 30 days give us a 30-day furlough and then he's going to send us to to Japan. And uh, before that happened, why the war ended in Japan, we didn't have to, we didn't have to go over there. Of course, I got stranded in Germany, but it was better than going to Japan. How did you find out the war was over? Did we had, they had communications with the, the United States. The, officers did. They passed the word down to us that Germany had surrendered. Of course you run out of, you know, after you go so far and you don't see any, and they take their uniforms off and uh, come out and greet you as civilians, you know. Well, I'm so glad you didn't have to go to Japan too. Yeah. Good. Yeah, we, we were dreading to go to Japan. We didn't want no part of that. Um, after 18 months, I bet you were just ready to go home. <laughs> Before 18 months, I bet you were just ready yeah. to go home. Of course, mm -hmm. I saw a lot of nice country over there, really. Uh, I was in France, Belgium, Germany, Switzerland. I guess that's where we was at. I went to, they sent me to Paris one time for uh, R&R, which was rest. And then I went to Switzerland one time for rest. What did you get some day for rest? Just after you came? Just like, just, uh, 
in Switzerland, it was just like the United States. Uh, we stayed in a hotel. Uh, they had ice cream, hot dogs, hamburgers, just like it was here in the United States. Uh, France was a different, of course. The French had been abused by the Germans for so long. They didn't trust anybody, really. But it was good to get off the out of the foxholes and out of the war for a week anyway. And they 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 would draw names, see who would go to that too. Every so often they'd send so many. Yeah, the twice. Yeah, go to rest R and R twice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they do that. I don't I don't know that. Really three names you sent you there. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when you got home? What was the first thing you ate? That's why I would, I would went, I would have had a little bacon. I don't have to, I really don't remember. <laughs> the only thing I can remember one time, my, my aunt was going to, she lived, they lived here in Gas City. She wanted me to come Betty and I to come home for dinner. And uh, I told Betty, I said, I hope she doesn't have hash. And we got to her and that's the first thing I saw, and she was having hash. <laughs> <laughs> It got so bad in the army that they had to, they would take the cans, it was, they, it was in cans, and they'd be cold, of course, and they turned it up, turned the label up so you couldn't see it and draw for different ones. Mm -hmm. The guys that, whoever got a can of hash, you could see it going through the air, you just throw it away. Oh. You'd rather be hungry than eat it. Cause, mm -hmm. and it was cold, and there'd be that much grease on top of it. Wasn't fit to eat. You just seen not eat. What exactly is hash? What is it? I don't. Know hash. It yeah. It's it was potatoes and some meat. I don't know what all was ground up in. Kind of like remind me of dog food. <laughs> oh. And uh, it just wasn't wasn't too appetizing. Yeah, not in the grease. That kind of ruins it. Uh -huh. So you, did you guys eat all your food cold then? You, you guys weren't allowed to make fires or anything to heat your feet up? Well, during the, of course during the war you didn't. Uh, uh, at night you weren't allowed to have any kind of a light. Uh, mm -hmm. At that time I smoked, and if you wanted to smoke at night you had to get under a rain suit or somewhere so that nobody could see the light. Yeah, that's not uh, Of course, uh, most of the time you didn't have time to to build a fire and then you just grab your can and sit down and eat and get ready for him to say, let's go. Because you didn't you know how long you're going to be stopped or mm. whether you're going to get shot at or what. Did it rain a lot or anything? Or it yeah, it rained a lot. Had a lot of cold rains, snow. It didn't wear it. I don't like being cold. No. Do you think that would be the worst season? Yeah. yeah. Mm. How deep do you think the snow got? The deepest you ever got? I don't remember. It, it didn't get real, real bad or where it was deep snow. It'd just be maybe two or three inches or something. But <coughs> oh. It'd be. That'd be enough. Of course, we had boots that came up crook or or your knee or your ankles there. They were insulated, but they didn't, they didn't keep the cold out. Still freezy. Mm -hmm. What are your blankets? Did you have any? Yeah, we had a blanket. Of course, we carried all that on, a, on our back. Uh, we had our blankets and our, our mess kits and our water jug. It was all rolled up, put in a, I don't remember what to call them now. We carry them on our back, whether we had our, our weapons, we had to carry, we usually carried our rifle or pistol, we'd have pistols, or I, I carried a pistol and a rifle, and then we had to carry the water 
One guy carried the tube, and the other guy carried the base. So he was pretty well loaded down when he was going moving. Make your endurance go up and down. Having to walk and carry all that. Did anybody get really sick from that? No, most of the guys, they kept you pretty well shot up with medicines that you can get in colds and pneumonia and that stuff. I don't remember ever having a cold over there. Back then, did you live on a farm or anything when you were young? Like before you were? No. No, I didn't live on the farm or anything. I used to work on the farms. We got for different farmers. I'd help make hay. And uh, one farmer, I'd take care of his chickens when they were gone. And uh, milk the cows. But we didn't live on a farm. Mm, so we must have like my mom, she lived on a farm. Mm -hmm. She's all strong and she had endurance. Thank you for sending me out to the camp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't make it. Can't do that. Maybe. Is there anything else you want to tell me about the war or anything? No, I don't know. Of. Yeah, like I said, if you want to take any of that. And then, yeah, I can't take that and photocopy it. We got a scanner, I can photocopy it. What's that for the photo for you? Hey, whatever you want to let me take. And it's all really neat. Take that. Yeah, I'll photocopy it. Yeah. Are you going to be home tomorrow? Because I can photocopy No, I'll be up to the retire store tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'll be home tomorrow evening. That evening here all day. Mm -hmm. I can come and see her. That's what she's doing. Uh, I'll be up at the retire store. I run in on Friday from 6 o'clock in the morning to about 3.30, so mm -hmm. I'm usually home before. Yeah, I'm in school. Yeah, you'll be in school yeah. anyway. Yeah. I'll throw yeah. the coffee in Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, well, thank you very much for your time. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your service, too. Okay. Um,